TV UK. I'm Malk. Um, I'm afraid Alan isn't with us tonight. Uh, on the brains of the operation and Al is of course the eye candy. Um, but unfortunately Al's got better things to do this evening than be here so I'm afraid you're stuck with me. Um, this is our budget hexa build um, which we've been sharing content around um, for a couple of weeks now. Um, I'm just going to go over the parts that we've used quickly. There will be a link in the description box uh, to all the items that we've used for this copter. So uh, I guess we should get on with that first off. Um, we're using the Turner G 3536-910KV SK series motors. Uh, sorry, these are the aero drives. Um, I've used these a fair bit in the electric planes um, that I fly. They've been pretty bulletproof. I've never really had any trouble with them that I can think of except for um, snapping a motor shaft, but that was my fault from crashing. Um, so I chose these. They are, I think, if correct me if I'm wrong, at the time of this video, just under £10 per corner um, for the motors. Uh, an interesting thing, we had four RC timer 30 amp speed controllers and two 20 amp RC timer Simon K flashed speed controllers. Now, I was going to try to get some speed controllers in for this build, but with one thing and another, lots going on over Christmas, didn't really have the time. But then unfortunately, I had the time to build it and Alan and I just decided to go for it. We didn't know whether you could run two 20, uh, 20 amp speed controllers with four 30s. Uh, we did an amp test to make sure that we weren't drawing too many amps for the 20s, and we weren't. So we decided to, uh, to give it a test. And as it turns out, it seems that you can mix and match different amperage um, speed controllers together on a multi-rotor platform like this without any problems. Now I'm not sure whether the smarter brains uh, like the NASA or the RG Pilot would see a problem but the KK 2.0 that we're using here certainly doesn't seem to see any problems at all with using a mixed matched ESC setup. So that's the electronic speed controllers. As I've just mentioned, we are using the KK 2.0 as our flight controller. Um, Alan found a, uh, an undercarriage for 20 quid off of eBay. Just search DJI NASA undercarriage and you'll find plenty of these. That was about 20 pounds. I'm using a Spectrum AR600 receiver, which is mounted down here on the leg. The frame is the integrated PCB version of the RC Timer S800 clone frame. Now this is pretty rigid, uh, and from the testing we've done, everything seems to work as well as we'd hoped. Um, it really does seem like a good solid platform uh, and we've had no issues. They did uh, send out the wrong size centre posts which I guess make the frame slightly more rigid in the centre um, but to be honest we haven't got those in there and it seems pretty rigid without those. However RC Timer if you are watching this video and you'd like to send us out the correct length poles for the centre of the frame please feel free to uh, PM me and I'll give you our, our address. So let's move on. Uh, that's the frame covered. 
the motors, the ESCs, the props that we're using are 1147 Gem Fan from Hobby King. These are the slow fly props from their multi rotor prop section. Uh, link for those also in the description box. I do have an FPV setup on this. This is the C, uh, Fat Shark CMOS CCD Killer um, FPV camera. We've got a 5.8 gigahertz Fat Shark Immersion RC um, uh, transmitter on there. And I've got a set of Fat Shark Dominator goggles which I use on my FPV vehicles. Um, this really isn't going to be an FPV vehicle, um, but it, it was nice to just test these things out. Eventually this will have a gimbal and a GoPro underneath, which we've got to one side, which is the Tarot gimbal. So please look out for that in an up and coming episode. So let's move on now uh, to the point of this video. We're going to just do some tweaks um, to the copter tonight. Yesterday, I um, added shrink wrap to all the bullets as a couple of the bullets were loose um, on the joiners. So they've got extra shrink wrap over the top of them now, holding the, the males and the females together. Uh, however, tonight's, um, tonight's, the objective of tonight is to um, remove vibration. Now, one of the ways we're going to start to do this or try to do this is by removing the excess from the bolts on top of the uh, prop adapters. There is an unusually large amount sticking out of these uh, on the aero drives. So we're going to remove those and finish those off slightly better. That will remove some of the excess metal that is causing vibration at distance from the motor. Um, also, if you look at the bottom there, between the prop adapter and the actual motor shaft itself, on these cheaper motors that aren't specifically designed for hexacopters, there is about a centimetre of extra shaft that really isn't needed. So we're going to be using a Dremel tool, and I say we, but it'll be me, I'm going to use the Dremel tool to remove the excess from the motor shaft and I'm going to show you one of the tricks that I use to make sure that you don't get any metal filings in the motor when you're doing this because that's not something you want to do. So uh, I'll run in some images uh, of myself doing this and a little bit of voiceover and then I'll come and see you when we've made the changes and we've got the props and everything back on the copter. Okay guys, so we're round at motor one. Um, I just thought I would show you uh, how to simply protect uh, your motor and speed controller and other bits. Just pass uh, a carrier bag, I'm pretty sure. We've all got a few of these kicking about. Up the arm, just pull the tip of the, uh, the rotor through and secure it up around the arm. Put that around there, and that just stops all the metal filings um, from going in and getting inside your motor. You may also want to have a can of air duster or some compressed air uh, around just to uh, just to blow off your KK or what other electrics that you've got after you've done this. So let's just pop that to one side, and literally we're just taking the Dremel tool. And uh, excuse the audio, we're just going to take the top of this motor off. Looking before I started, I needed to take about a centimetre from each shaft. So that's what I'm going to do now. So I'm just going to put some eye protection on. Very, very important if you're doing this kind of thing.
Okay guys, turn it off for a sec. So that's the uh, the top of the road to shorten. Just turn this back on. And just take off the bird edges to uh, just to make sure that the uh, the prop adapter will fit back on and I don't know whether you can see that but a lot of the metal filings have collected there just twist and repeat this six times and your sh motor sh shafts will be a lot shorter and your props will be a lot closer to your motor this will help to give you the least amount of vibration on your multi-rotor as possible Okay guys, just to demonstrate what this looks like before I move on to the next step, just push the uh, prop adapter down, give it a little tap, just to make sure it's all the way home. Uh, drop that on, put the prop on, pop the washer on, and then the nut. And you'll notice, although I've removed uh, about a centimetre from um, this shaft and a centimetre from the prop adapter, I've left a couple of turns of thread beyond that. And the reason I've done that is because these are quite a thin prop. If we was to fit a slightly larger prop, we'd need those extra couple of turns. And hopefully, you can see now that the, uh, the prop adapter is actually sat flush on the motor, reducing the height here. So if there is any um, bad machining going on with the prop adapter, having this prop a lot closer to the motor center will remove or help to hide any of the problems that are actually built into the device. Right, the next step Okay, so the next step guys uh, is to shorten down uh, the, the prop adapter Just going to take our Dremel tool and make a mark with the prop still on and all the washers in place and then I'll remove this or remove everything from that and then just hold this with the pliers this does get very warm when you're doing it don't forget to put your uh, eye protection on like I did earlier so guys that brings us to the end of our budget hexa project modification guide uh, just a couple of tips there really um, Get the props as close to the motors as you can. That's the, uh, the short explanation of what we chose to do here. Um, having the rotating mass closer to the motor minimises vibrations uh, and the chances of motor shaft snapping and things like that. So it's something that takes you maybe a couple of hours to do, but really is worth the effort. Um, we balance the props off of... Uh, off the camera, I'm getting, you, you guys know how to do that, right? Yeah? Well, if you don't, here's a link to our friends at Flight Test. They've got a video showing you how to dynamically balance your props. This really is something that's worth doing on a multi-rotor platform or any RC plane as it uh, minimises the damage, minimises vibration, which makes things come loose and things just fly a lot better when you've done it. Uh, my final tip for this episode is get yourself a tiny little drop of thread locker and just place it, just a little tiny dollop 
on top of each of these nuts so that it sits between the nut and the thread. This will allow you to remove the nut if need be, but it will also stop the prop coming off in flight. And if you search on YouTube, hexacopter, uh, tricopter or quadcopter loses a prop, you'll find about 70 videos straight away. And then if you search more, you'll find loads. It's a very, very common uh, fault for someone that's built one of these and hasn't used a bit of thread locker. This stuff's cheap, find it on Hobby King, get yourself a bottle. And whenever you've got a critical uh, nut or bolt, tiny, tiny little bit of thread locker, that's all you need. So guys, look out for this hexa in up and coming videos. We're not finished with this one yet. I'm Mount Barnard for RCTV UK. Bye for now. Thank you.